Hello, everyone. I'm very excited to be here and present our research, hopefully in person. In the next seven minutes, I will be outlining the motivation behind our work and present a snapshot of the letter itself. We will begin deconstructing the title by introducing tendon-driven continuum robots. These robots, as you can see, have a central flexible backbone with tendons running parallel to it. By pulling or releasing these tendons, the robot can then conform to curvilinear shapes in space. While modeling these flexible structures pose a challenge in itself, I'd like to begin by speaking about their configuration space representation. As you can see on the right, due to their continuous structure, you would theoretically require an infinite number of parameters to define them. To discretize this space, there have been many approaches that rely and apply geometric assumptions and other approximations to the backbone itself. One of the most common approaches in literature is the constant curvature representation. Here, the entire segment is approximated as a circular arc. However, from Hooke's law, we know that it can only model constant moments and represent in-plane bending. What this means is that it cannot account for variations in curvature resulting from, for example, gravitational forces from a tool placed at the tip or while performing pick and place operations. Nonetheless, this representation is widely used in the community due to its simplicity and accuracy in representing these robots while operating in free space. There are multiple proposed models that map the actuator space to the task space. And due to its simplicity in representation, these models have low computation time as everything can be expressed in the form of matrix operations. Inspired by one of the papers presented at ICA in 2019 to use Euler curves to represent long and heavy continuum robots, we wondered whether we can apply them to model these strip forces while retaining the advantages of the constant curvature representation. So now, by extending the number of curvature parameters to do, we can model not only the constant moment, but also an external force acting at the tip. We can extend this representation to 3D by linearizing all three components of curvature with the configuration space now requiring just six parameters to represent the robot, two curvatures along each axis. If we use what are called Euler arc splines, we can combine the benefits of the constant curvature representation by using a series of constant curvature arcs to represent the backbone with their curvatures varying linearly by assuming them to be in arithmetic progression. Doing so helps us retain the use of matrix operations to compute the configuration to task space mapping. Next, we tested the representation on a set of 70 configurations to estimate its accuracy in representing a prototype. The Euclidean distances of the predicted and experimentally observed positions of each disk is plotted on the right, expressed as percentages with respect to length. We observed that the distribution of tip error has an average of less than 0.5% with respect to length. Therefore, our first objective of investigating its accuracy has been fulfilled. Next, we propose a static model that accounts for tendon interactions, frictional and gravitational forces, as well as an external force that I mentioned earlier. While for the sake of time, I will not be able to delve too deep into the model itself, I invite you to have a look at the detailed description in the letter that solves for the six unknown curvature parameters with six nonlinear equations. Next, we looked at the model's accuracy compared to two common models in literature and found that its performance is comparable. And finally, we studied the evolution of its computation time with increasing number of disks on the right. We see that even with up to 50 disks, it requires a lower computation time and is about four to five times faster than other models for a robot with 10 disks. Thus, we fulfilled the objectives we set out to achieve. Now, no matter which physics-based model we use, there are bound to be discrepancies between the predicted and observed shape due to various unmodeled factors, such as manufacturing and assembly errors. 
an advantage of using a discrete configuration representation is that we can quantify these continuous curves. Doing so helps us build error models that can combine the curvatures calculated from the physics-based model with the observed curvature values. These error models can then be used to learn these discrepancies and make more accurate predictions of what the backbone curvature would be. What you see here is the error distribution in the disk positions with the physics-based and hybrid models. And we see a reduction in the error of the final disk using just 30 observations for training. Another advantage of having just six parameters is that these error models can now be built to be data efficient. With this, I'd like to conclude that understanding the backbone representation of these robots is a fundamental and essential step in building complex systems around them. It can help us build accurate and efficient models, which in turn can give us unique insight into their behavior when they perform certain tasks. While we study some of the more immediate advantages of dimensionality reduction, extending the approach to multiple forces along the backbone, building calibrated models for force sensing, etc., could help us better understand the behavior of these robots under the influence of different environmental factors when these robots are deployed, deployed in different applications. In addition to the questions today, please feel free to reach out to me with regards to any questions you may have on the IDs provided above. The QR code on the top right corner can be used to access the paper itself. Thank you for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Have a good day.